Ipex Kitech. What's the deal with this stuff? Well, here's my two cents, and I'm a homeowner. Bought my house about two years ago and uh, didn't know any better to do a plumbing specific inspection, nor did I think it was needed. I'm the third owner of my home. It was built in 2004. And uh, I learned about a year into uh, living in the house that I had uh, a defunct PEX called Kitech. How did I know it? Well, one leak after another. Lots of fun. Um, so what is Kitech? Let's start there. Well, it's a type of PEX. Specifically, it's a PEX L PEX, meaning that it has an aluminum core inside. Well, what's the purpose of the aluminum core? Well, we have the outer polyethylene, the aluminum core, and then straddled again with polyethylene. And the whole idea with this stuff, and you could still buy PEX L PEX today, is that, well, first and foremost, you can bend it and it holds its shape. So that's pretty convenient when you get into some uh, different types of loops and configurations, kind of holds its shape. It also acts as an oxidation barrier. So when you're using this in a heating system, you keep the oxygen from leaching into the water and causing corrosion in your heating system, right? All makes sense. No problems there. Uh, and, and like I mentioned, you could still buy PEX L PEX today for radiant heating. The problem is not so much the pipe. In fact, uh, fast forwarding a little bit, I, this past weekend, just went and did a project where I eliminated, uh, I'd say about 85 to 90% of this from my hot and cold water runs to my, uh, to, to really all the fixtures in my house. Um, I took many samples that I removed and I cut them and inspected them and the pipe itself, well, there's nothing really wrong with it. And from my research online, very few people have had problems with the pipe failing. What fails is the corresponding fixtures. And here's an example. This was my heating loop, or rather uh, the one of the first lines. So here was my trunk, and here's where you could see it branched out. So three quarter inch trunk branched out to one half to various fixtures. And you could see that all these brass fittings are broken. Now, some of them broke on their own, but you know, once upon a time, they were, of course, like this. And with the resistance of about a toothpick, once I cut this out of my house, I was able to just snap these off. And here you can see what happens. And this was consistent across pretty much all of my fittings. The hot were, of course, worse than the cold, but the results were more or less the same. Um, so so what's, what's the deal here? Well, the fittings, first and foremost, they don't make high-tech any longer, nor should they. It was used for about a decade, predominantly in Canada and the New England states. The problem with these fittings is that they are brass and they, of course, like making PEX L PEX, they still make brass fittings today. However, these brass fittings had high levels of, uh, of zinc and the zinc would be leached out over time and, well, cause the fitting to get brittle and fail. This is especially true if you're like me and you're on well water where the well water is, or in my case was, slightly acidic. Now I mentioned I've been in my house for about two years. Uh, about a year in, I had a water conditioning system put in, so a pH neutralizer. I currently sit at a 7.1 uh, and a softener just to eliminate some of the metals. Overall, I have good well water with the exception of the acidity which is naturally occurring in the New England states anyway, so nothing wrong there. But you can see the end result. So house was built in 2004. I just ripped this out, uh, so 16 years. And uh, this is a type of material that was quoted to last, you know, 20, 30. Uh, I've actually read some material that said it should last 50 years, no problem. Well, 16 years in, here we go. And this stuff was sold 
in uh, various forms. Uh, I noticed I had some that was from Plum Better, which I think was a branding name, but same thing, Pexel Pex with the aluminum core. Uh, and uh, well, there it is. So um, I went through a project this past weekend. You can see I had tons of fun here. Uh, I should invite some of you to join me, but I took care of all of the runs that account to for you know 85 to 90%, and I ripped it all out. Now, like I said, even though the piping itself is not bad, and I've I came across only a few occurrences where people have had the piping fail, but that was, in my opinion, due to install problems. If it was readily accessible, I cut it out and I removed it. Um, just to give everybody a starting point, if you're embarking on this, this was very stressful for me uh, personally. Also, the peace of mind aspect with having a finished basement and the fact that it could flood at a moment's notice. Uh, I ended up replacing all of my readily accessible hot and cold water runs. I ended up going with a Ponner Pex A with blue fin brass fittings and blue fin stainless steel cinch clamp rings. That was my choice. I know there's the copper crimps and I know there's PEX B and PEX C. This is what I ended up going with and I'm very happy with the result. Now let's go back to Kitech real quick because that's really the purpose. I wanted to share what I've learned and hopefully I had a piecemeal a lot of data together and I want to help anybody out there who's encountering this and, and how you can go and solve this. So I decided that I'm going to solve this in a three-phase approach. And what I just shared with you was phase one complete. And it's 85% easily. Well, what remains? Well, I'm a two-story colonial, which means that the basement is going to handle a lot. But I also have bathrooms upstairs. And of course, they go through the floor and through the walls and... Well, that's not a fun time. Uh, so I was looking for a way, since I have plans to renovate my bathrooms in a couple of years, they're not in the budget today, but I was trying to figure out how I could make use of the Kitech pipes, but properly couple them to regular pecs. I stumbled across a company based in Canada called Veritech, very happy with the result. Veritech makes these transition fittings and they have multiple sizes and multiple configurations. Like for example, you can go uh, Kitech to copper, for example. Now I end up going Kitech to PEX. And these are transition fittings. And the whole idea here is that while the inside diameter of the, the Kitech is just like any other plumbing, not even just PEX, in that it follows the standard 3 8 1 half, 3 quarter, 1, uh, one inch, etc. Uh, the inside diameter is a normal size. However, the outside diameter of Kitech is slightly greater, and I think this is true for PEX L PEX that you buy today, but don't quote me. Uh, I didn't have any use case to really investigate uh, that particular situation because I'm not doing any uh, replacement here at this point, but um, the whole idea is regular fittings will not work. Now, could you jam them in there and get them to crimp? Sure. Is it correct? No. Uh, this is a purpose. Uh, this is a fitting for the exclusive purpose of going Kitech uh, to regular. So it's the uh, the idea that you can transition with a fitting that is designed for the purpose. Now it's pretty ingenious. You see on this one side, you just slip on regular pecs and crimp and clamp it like you normally would. The other side, you see there's two rubber O-rings. Uh, per the instructions, I used a non-petroleum 100% silicone base grease that I put on the O-rings before sliding it into the Kitech. And the reason why you do that is because you do not want those O-rings to roll when you're sliding it. And it, helps, it actually helps get it in the pipe too. Uh, so the, the, the lube is useful for multiple uh, 
uh, reasons. But you slide it in, and then what you end up doing is they sell, I ended up getting the non-professional version of the tool because I was only doing about six of these. Um, but they make a tool that's perfect, uh, purposely designed to actually crimp the Kitex side of the fitting. Now, the way they do this is unlike the one side where you use the copper crimp rings or the stainless steel cinches, if we go back up and I show you one I've done, you can actually see that that tool uses, it makes use of the aluminum core of the pipe itself and crimps it down, making a fitting. And I've had this, I did this work on Saturday and we are now Wednesday and this has been totally solid. All six of them that I've done, there's one in my jacuzzi uh, and another one that runs up to my master bathroom, my hot and cold. So that's some information on, you know, Kai Tech, what the problem is, how you can remediate it. Now, ideally, you cut out all the Kai Tech, but there are use cases like mine uh, where you're either not in a position or not ready to bust open your walls to replumb this stuff. And that's where these transition fittings come into play. Um, they're priced really well for what they are. They're of super high quality, very lightweight, being completely aluminum. And I am very happy uh, with them. And um, it's a, definitely a stopgap. My long-term goal, and I realize this video is getting lengthy, but I very much hope that I'm helping somebody in some way. My ultimate goal is eventually I will cut those fittings out and have a fresh line straight shot with no joints that runs from here all the way up to my bathrooms. Uh, I decided to make that a phase two for the reason of I plan to redo my bathrooms later and it makes no sense to rip them apart to replumb them only to put them back together again and then in a few years rip them apart again. And I have yet to have any leaks in my bathrooms, knock on all wood that is in this basement uh, that I don't have any issues, but I haven't had any issues. All my leaks have been uh, here or what was here. And then of course, as I mentioned, I redid this. So ideally you remove it in its entirety, though you can do a you know risk assessment on what your risk is on leaving the pipe and letting the fittings be replaced or transitioned, as I've mentioned. Now, in my house, just to, to wrap this up, bring it over the finish line, this was not only used for hot and cold water, but I also have hydronic heating as well. So you can see that this stuff is rather plentiful across my house. And I've actually went around to my house. What ends up happening is, like, for example, this run jumps right up and there's a baseboard uh, heater that runs the length of the room. Uh, all this pipe does is, is butts up to that and clamps on with a fitting. I have inspected every single one of my baseboard heaters, the inlet and the outlet. None of them are leaking. None of them are black, green, powdery. They're, they're perfect. They have no signs of any issues. So it gives me a level of comfort. Whereas you can obviously see, and some of it has been scraped off a little bit, but you can see in my hot water runs that this was inherently obvious that there was a problem going on just because of the whiteness. And like I said, with me touching these, a lot of it has fallen off, but these were very powdery and very obvious. To show you an example, of while my heating loop is fine at the baseboard uh, heaters themselves, here's an example. Um, here is my manifold that brings the hot water back to be reheated at the boiler. Here you can see uh, this will be another part of the project where I don't necessarily have to touch the vents, but I do have to replace the shutoff valves and these fittings here. Now we're in the middle of winter, so I'm leaving this alone. However, at the end of the season, I will drain the system down completely and then go ahead and redo all these fittings. I counted about eight that I'll have to redo that look like this. And again, all readily accessible and in my basement, so not horrible. 
But hey, in, in closing, if you have Kai Tech, you can't avoid it, especially if you have acidic water, you're in the New England states and there's some age on it. They don't use it anymore. But if you're somebody who had it installed in your house, chances are it's already failing. Take a look. Uh, this was brought to my attention again because I had many leaks, small little leaks. And then I ended up doing a tankless water heater over the summer. And it really put it in perspective when I went to repressurize the system and burp it. I actually had, you're looking right here at what was the first fitting of my hot water run. So this actually was right here at one point. And I replaced my hot water heater with a Navi, went to pressurize and burp the system. And this fitting catastrophically failed and spewed water everywhere. And that's what really, I knew this was a problem before then, but that very rupture brought it into perspective that this is something you have to prioritize. This is something that, you know, you could do drastic measures like I did here and replumb essentially your entire house. But if you can't, and the only thing that you're able to do is replace the fittings, then replace the fittings. There is a solution. Veritech, if you're watching this, you made my life a whole lot easier. Thank you for making these. Uh, I did stock up. I hope you guys continue to offer these up to people who uh, have this stuff in their house uh, and are suffering from the same problems. But uh, really, that's my experience. That's my two cents. Uh, that's my knowledge in a nutshell on this product. And I invite anybody to reach out if they have any questions I haven't covered or haven't answered. I'll do my best to help out fellow homeowners that have, you know, have this stuff in their house. And uh, I uh, definitely respect the fact that you'll want to keep your house and your family safe and uh, flooding and the results of damage and mold and everything that comes from it is no joke. And um, well, that's, uh, that's the iTech or IPEX KaiTech and uh, my observations and experiences. And uh, like I said, reach out if you have any questions or if you have anything to share with others, please do. Um, best of luck. Not fun. It's a shame that companies are able to... Uh, sell products that uh, do not leave, you know, meet the, at least meet, right? You expect it to exceed, but at least meet what they quote for life expectancy. And uh, there was a class action lawsuit. There is a pool of money uh, that has since passed. So if you have not gotten your application in or, or your paperwork in for it, you are immediately ineligible. Unfortunately, I was able to get mine in. Uh, I'm not counting on ever seeing a dime. And just to put it in perspective, guys uh, and gals out there, I did this all myself. I am not a, I, I have an engineering background. I have an engineering degree, uh, different trade, but uh, I ended up buying about 400 feet of PEX, uh, 200 feet and uh, three quarters and 200 feet and half inch. Uh, I did this in about six, hours and of course you're not seeing the other side of it that's in my utility room straight ahead and some other pieces but about 16 hours um and about 740 dollars in material so so not terrible it was really just time consuming and uh now that this is over the finish line i look forward to getting my ceiling back together again i have a couple of places that need new panels because they were getting leaked on uh very similar to this guy here. So uh, looking forward to getting this over the finish line. But uh, I wish everybody luck who has this stuff in their house. Definitely take it seriously. Don't brush it off. It is not if it fails, it's when. And you'd rather catch it uh, at your convenience instead of when it decides to go. Have a good one.